It's gonna be the long weekend here in China because it happens to be the Dragon Boat Festival or as I like to call it, the Dumpling Festival. No, not the kind that you get in Dumpling King, but these kinds. The festival was officially declared as a public holiday here in China in 2008 to promote traditional culture. And of course, we do celebrate it back home in Singapore as well. Not as a public holiday, but a day where all grannies unite and feed us into oblivion with these dumplings. They are sometimes known as ba zhang or zhongzi back home, but they're essentially the same thing. And for those who aren't familiar with Chinese traditions, they sometimes get a bit confused when all this triangular satchel starts appearing in their local Chinatown. Don't worry, it's just glutinous rice wrapped in some sort of leaves. So today we're going to talk about what these dumplings have to do with the dragon boats and why do we celebrate it. Well, to be honest, it first started off as two completely unrelated stories and we decided to merge it into one single folklore. We, as in our great, great ancestors. To begin, I must first explain the Chinese lunar month. A lunar month is the time it takes from one full moon to the next and it takes approximately a month, hence the name lunar month. That being said, on the fifth day of the fifth, on the fifth day, on the fifth fish, three, five, four, four, that being said, on the fifth day of the fifth lunar month, it happens to be the unluckiest day for anyone on earth, said to be filled with calamities and death. So it is the day that you want to touch the crap out of anything made of wood. And that ominous date falls sometime in June. Wait, June? Fifth lunar month? January, February, March, April, May. No, I'm not an idiot. The Chinese calendar starts at the end of January or sometime at the beginning of February. So the fifth lunar month is June. And no, it isn't the 5th of June, even though I said it's the fifth day of the fifth month. Because like I said, the lunar month takes about approximately a month. So not exactly a month. So every year the date might shift here and there a bit. I wonder if our ancestors did this as a ritual so that we still practice math a billion years after they've passed on. So on this very unfortunate day, people do anything, and I mean like anything to avoid the bad luck, like hanging plants, spices, or perfume bags on their body, or even to subscribe to this channel. Yeah, that's what people in the past would do, like um, access this non-existing internet conglomerate and subscribe to Soul Thirsty. But also in the past, he who owns the most amount of rice is king. So in order to prevent drought and ensure a good rainfall for a productive harvest, People had to please the river and rain gods. I mean, like they had to do it. No questions asked, they absolutely had to please them. Otherwise there'll be no rain, no sunshine, no happiness, no nothing. And by the way, these river gods, they're dragons. If you don't already know that, you should be ashamed of yourself and watch Disney's Raya and the Last Dragon. But anyway, I digress. My ancestors carved dragon heads onto the tip of their boats and sail out into the river to appease and seduce the river gods. Now, these rice dumplings, innocent as they may look, have a much darker history. I say history because it's real. And even though there are many origin stories relating to these dumplings, they're all to commemorate different people of the past, but in particular one of them. A poet and advisor, Chu Yuan was loved by the locals for his patriotism and his care for the people. But unfortunately, as we all know, all good things must come to an end. He was betrayed, accused of treason, and banished by the king. Um, well, he obviously didn't take it very well and he fell into despair and depression. He decided to end his life by the most painless way, drowning himself into the river. And as word spread, to no surprise, people, when people heard about it, they decided to race out with their boats to you know, find his body. And when they couldn't find his body, they decided to drop these little dumplings into the river so that the fishes would eat the dumplings instead of his body. Um, just so you know, I know what you guys are thinking. I didn't read this off the internet, it's just uh, common Chinese, uh, that's right, common Chinese knowledge. And someone should make this into an animation. So after some Confucius magic, these two stories became one. And today's dragon boats are used neither to appease the river gods nor to find a stinking rotting body, but for sporting events and to commemorate the day that Chu Yuan died. So ironically, on the unluckiest day of every year, we celebrate Dragon Boat Festival. Honestly, I think it's just a day where people had to cool themselves off during the hot summer day. It's June and it's summer in China. But we have also somehow turned into the fishes in the river, consuming as many dumplings as possible. But honestly, I've seen people destroy like 5 to 10 of these all by themselves. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not one of them. 
there are many different kinds of rice dumplings. You have the plain ones which have no fillings, they're just purely glutinous rice and you eat it with dipping sauce or some sugar. And then there is my favourite, which is the uh, savoury kinds, where the fillings are mainly pork, uh, eggs, uh, mushroom and chestnuts. Well, and why not, help yourself with a dumpling ice cream. Man, it must be good being a fish back in those days. Well, for now I've just gotten these babies off the local supermarket, and I don't really know what the fillings are inside, but let's just give this kinder surprise a go. Look at that sticky, slimy, shiny rice. Delicious. Let's try it, shall we? Oh, sorry, I also forgot to mention that there is the dessert version of the dumplings as well, which apparently is this one. And it has some sort of bean paste inside with, um, it smells a bit like rose water or perfume. Yeah, so it's the first time that I'm trying this as well. The glutinous rice itself is alright. It has the similar texture of a jelly bean, um, sticky and dense, very good. It's good, but the ones that my grandma make are better. Well, now that we are done with the dumplings, we need some refreshing drink. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for joining us. I hope that this video has given you some insights into Chinese culture. If you liked the video, please give a thumbs up or leave a comment down below. In the meantime, I'm going to drop some dumplings into the river and hopefully I don't get condemned or deported before I can remind you to subscribe and stay so thirsty.